Hello everyone, my name is Doel Bose. I am a clinical embryologist and an IVF lab director at Indore Infertility Clinic. Uh, today I am addressing a vital but often overlooked aspect of embryology that is semen sample preparation in IUI cycles. We are going to discuss the why, when and how of the same. Today we shall be quickly covering the following. Purpose of semen sample preparation timeline from sample collection to insemination, traditional methods of semen sample preparation, new methods available for semen uh, sample preparation, and a crisp take-home message. Let us briefly brush up our theoretical knowledge as this is paramount in understanding sperm preparation technique. As shown, spermatozoa or sperm make merely 2-5% to of the total volume of the ejaculate. Roughly 65 to 70 percent of the seminal plasma is contributed by seminal vesicles and it is slightly alkaline in nature. The constituents of the prostate gland contribute roughly 25 to 30 percent of the seminal plasma and they are slightly acidic in nature. Bulbourethral gland contributes lubricating proteins that make about 1 percent of the seminal plasma. So the goal of any sperm preparation method is first to remove the sperm from the inhibitory factors present in the seminal plasma and then to keep the spermatozoa viable for as long as they can be before they are finally inseminated or used. Factors in the seminal plasma like cellular debris, anti-sperm antibodies, leukocytes etc. inhibit spermatozoa from undergoing capacitation and acrosome reaction and this reduces the ability of the spermatozoa to finally successfully fertilize an oocyte. So our purpose during IUI is to go from what you see on the left <clears throat> that is a neat semen sample with immotile uh, sperm, non-sperm cells and debris to what you see on the right which is a clear fraction of a highly motile sperm separated from seminal plasma. So the final aim for the semen sample preparation for IUI should be to first isolate a total motile sperm count of roughly 10 million uh, sperm or more with 90% or more actively motile sperm limit the volume of the inseminate to 0.3 ml to 0.5 ml and maintain a timeline of insemination to 1 hour to 1.5 hours between collection to insemination now coming to the most important factor here which is the timeline. Now what you see on the screen is a rough estimate of the timeline from collection to insemination. Here the most important step is to do an immediate pre-assessment as soon as the semen sample liquefies. The more you wait on this step it becomes detrimental for the spermatozoa which is present in the seminal plasma. For a successful IUI, the timeliness of the semen sample preparation and insemination matters. So there are many studies which have proven that the percentage motility decreases by roughly 20% one hour post ejaculation. And also the post wash sample should not be stored beyond 60 minutes because the more you wait on it on a prepared sample it becomes uh, detrimental for the sperm and, uh, and their viability and it is best to inseminate within 45 minutes after washing the sperm. Coming to the semen sample preparation, how do you prepare a semen for IUI? So the ideal semen sample preparation method should be quick, it should be affordable, it should maintain a sperm's integrity and it should be easy to standardize. The standard semen sample preparation method for a fresh semen sample that we will be covering today would be swim up and double density gradient. So what is a swim up and when should you choose a swim up? Swim up method should be chosen for non-mosospermic sample. We, I don't need to go back and define what is non-mosospermia I hope. There should be no signs of infection in the semen sample. It should have a good forward progression or motility and it should have a normal viscosity. So when to avoid swim up is an important topic. First any suboptimal parameter in the semen 
as in reduced motility reduced concentration or uh, poor morphology you should avoid a swim up you should avoid a swim up when there is signs of infection in a semen sample infectious semen sample have discolored you know the semen is discolored uh, yellowish tinge to it maybe and presence of too many round cells technically round cells could be either leukocytes or germ cell immature germ cells but in absence of staining when you cannot tell for sure which one it is it is best to be cautious and avoid swim up swim up should not be done for a zero positive sample and highly viscous sample or very low volume of the sample because the final inseminate um, concentration would be impacted due to it. So coming to the traditional swim up from a washed pellet. Now this is the traditional method of swim up where you wait for the semen sample to liquefy about roughly 20-25 minutes. After liquefaction you wash the semen sample in a media, a wash media and after this step you discard the supernatant overlay it with media and then you transfer the pellet to a new tube now as you see in this method you are washing a semen sample after liquefaction without uh, separating the viable spermatozoa in presence of uh, detrimental factors in the semen and you are centrifuging it so this step could be um, you know could affect the integrity of the spermatozoa and that is why a new type of uh, variation in the swim up method came into existence and it is called a direct swim up here you do not centrifuge the uh, semen sample or a neat semen sample what you do is after liquefaction you first um, overlay the semen sample with media and then you incline the tube at about roughly 45 degrees to increase the surface area so that the viable spermatozoa can swim up to the media then you centrifuge or do a soft spin on it and then discard the supernatant and create a final pellet and this can be used for IUI insemination now coming to double density gradient when should you choose this method so whenever you have a suboptimal semen sample which is not fit for traditional swim up the method of choice should be double density gradient the method should also be chosen when there are signs of infection in the semen sample when you have an affected motility or morphology or when you have a zero positive sample so in short whenever you are unable to perform a traditional swim up or a direct swim up you would go ahead and choose a double density gradient method this is one of the most standardized method and it is also very easy to teach and standardize your entire IUI lab SOP few important terminologies of double density gradient the upper layer or upper phase is of a lower density and what you see on the screen as pointed by number one the lower layer or lower phase is of a higher density it is pointed by the number three interphase is what exists between the upper layer or upper phase and the lower layer and lower phase it is the intersection of these two layers few other terminologies would be pellet pellet is what is collected at the bottom of the tube after centrifugation supernatant is whatever is present on the top or area of the pellet after centrifugation overlaying means whenever you discard whatever is present on the supernatant and you add media slowly over the pellet that area is called the overlay so double density gradient method can be broken down to these five steps as shown on the screen so while the semen sample is being liquefied um, in the incubator the first step is to overlay the layers meaning first you would add the lower density in a tube fresh tube then you would slowly add the upper density which is the lower density and in such a way that you would create a distinct and a clear interface the creation of an interface is very important for a double density gradient and this step 
is one of the most critical steps in the entire process so make sure that you overlay only after the media has reached room temperature and you keep this uh, overlaid tube for roughly at least 10 to 15 minutes so that the interface is distinct once the semen sample has liquefied and your pre-assessment is done the next step would be to uh, step number two which is adding the semen sample on this uh, tube roughly you should take about only one ml of semen sample and overlay it on top of your layered tube you should then spin it at 500 g for roughly 12 minutes now this protocol would uh, you know you can this protocol can differ depending on semen sample but this is on an average what you uh, tend to do the third step is to remove the supernatant from uh, the centrifuge tube then you should uh, take another fresh tube with media and then remove the pellet and add to the uh, wash tube centrifuge it again and after the centrifugation you have to remove the supernatant and you can overlay it with about roughly point three to four ml of fresh media so that your uh, prepared semen sample is ready and then you are ready to load your IUI catheter the most important things to remember while performing the double density gradient is that rule number one the total volume of semen process should not exceed the volume of the media in the gradient column meaning if you have one ml of the lower phase 1 ml of the upper phase do not you know be enticed to add 2 ml or more of semen sample because the moment you do that the uh, weight of the semen sample the column of the semen sample will exceed the weight of the upper and lower phases and the entire process will be ineffective the right way of doing it is to have just one or at the most 1.2 ml of semen sample as a column on the top of the um, density layers the second rule is do not create large gradient layers as it will reduce the recovery of motile sperms so if you think that you know uh, you want to be generous and you want to add 1.5 ml or 2 ml of uh, gradient columns uh, because you want to do a better sperm selection that will never work what will happen is the recovery of motile sperm will be very less so finally the double density gradient tips the first thing is importance of an interface layer at least for 10 minutes and use within an hour so there is a minimum and maximum limit set to the interface layer do not overlay large column of semen as I explained in the rules use fresh pipette and conical tube at each step this is very important because the non-sperm cell or immotile cells uh, sperm cell tend to stick to the tubes you know the outer surface of the tube and this will impact your final fraction be slow be gentle at each step and process only one sample at a time this is very important now coming to the standard semen uh, preparation method for cryo sample because when you would be doing an um, IUI donor sample this is what will be useful to you so there are two kinds of cryo sample that you will be dealing with the first case is when you have a semen sample which has been prepared before freezing that is a double density or swim up whatever method of preparation has been done before freezing the cryo sample and the number two is when you have a neat sample which has been frozen so it is important to know um, whether the cryo vial has the semen uh, the sperm separated or it has a neat sample which has been frozen so in case you have the donor sperm sample vial which uh, or the husband sperm sample cryo preserved after preparation that is after separating the sperm from the plasma then in that case you would wait for the semen sample to uh, come to a room temperature the vial to come to a room temperature follow your SOP for uh, thaw process then you would mix it with appropriate amount of media usually 
um, 2 to 3 ml of medium centrifuge it remember to do a soft spin because it is already a prepared sample discard the superneatant and you can then overlay the um, pellet with a small amount of medium appropriate enough for IUI insemination but in case your semen sample has been uh, frozen neat in that case your choice of um, sperm separation could be a double density gradient and you could follow the same steps as explained earlier to you in that case only thing to remember is after the semen sample the thaw semen sample comes to a room temperature do not wait for a long time every minute that you wait is detrimental for the integrity of the spermatozoa coming to microfluidic semen sample preparation this is one of the advanced methods of semen sample preparation so when should you choose a microfluidic sperm selection method or rather when should you not choose so this covers both of them um, the indications for microfluidics would be sample with very high DFI it is definitely not meant for cases of severe OATS where uh, the final concentration is uh, you know sperm concentration is less if there are signs of infection in the sample please refrain from using the microfluidic sperm selection technique now interestingly microfluidics can be used um, when you have an absence of a centrifuge machine due to either a power outage or a failure in the machine so a quick demonstration of the method so there are many kind of microfluidic devices available in the market this one particularly is called Zymot and um, they have various kind of devices depending on the final intended use this Zymot chip has a thin membrane um, which acts as a filter and it filters the immotile sperm from the motile fraction so one of the ports can be used to inject 850 microliters of liquefied semen sample it can be overlaid with 750 microliter of buffer media and then you are supposed to keep it in the incubator for a stipulated time frame roughly 25 to 30 minutes and after uh, the stipulated time you are supposed to extract the motile fraction from the other port and then transfer it to a transfer tube and um, this particular method involves no centrifugation and this is the motile fraction that you have extracted out of the microfluidic device so advanced sperm selection techniques like microfluidics can be used in indicated cases um, there are many papers which vouch for its uh, benefit in cases of um, semen sample with high dfi However, you will also find many papers which will say that there is a no particular advantage of using the same. So um, be selective about using a microfluidic device um, and in selective cases, of course, this will do no harm as you are reducing two steps of centrifugation out of it. It definitely simplifies the workflow. So if you have a um, specific semen sample, you can go ahead and use a microfluidic device so the final take home message pre-assessment of a semen sample before IUI is as important as pre-assessment of a semen sample before IVF or XC because this defines the abstinence needed for a semen sample a shorter abstinence will do better but not for all semen sample so make sure you pre-assess the sample the second important point is um, it is very important to follow a strict timeline especially for cryo samples remember a cryoprotectant at room temperature is deleterious for your spermatozoa again reiterating timing matters short intervals between collection to processing and processing to insemination will give you a good result and finally improvise to reach the desired total motile sperm count use two sets of density gradient to reach a desired total motile post process count whenever needed thank you so much for your time and your patient hearing you can find me at embryogeny a training institute for ivf and embryology related training thank you again